Hello everyone. Current Electricity Part 1 Introduction and Ohm's Law. In this video, I will be going through the introduction of current electricity and Ohm's Law. So, first we shall see the introduction for current electricity. That is, charges in motion constitute an electric current. The naturally occurring phenomenon where a current flows is lightning. In case of lightning, the flow of electric current is unsteady. This caused by the discharge of electricity from the storm clouds. Devices in which steady flow of current takes place are torches, cloaks, calculators, etc. Now we can see more about electric current. For that, we can consider an area A, which is normal to the direction of flow of electric current. Now, let Q plus be the net amount of positive charges flowing in the forward direction along this area and Q minus be the net amount of negative ch charges flowing through this area in the forward direction. Therefore, the net amount of charge flowing across the area in the forward direction in the time interval t is q is equal to q plus minus q minus. i is equal to q by t. i is defined as the current across the area in the forward direction. So, electric current is the rate of flow of charge. Currents are not always steady and hence more generally we define the current as follows. Let delta Q be the net charge flowing across a cross section of a conductor during the time interval delta T that is between times T and T plus delta T. Then the current at time T across the cross section of the conductor is defined as the value of the ratio of delta q to delta t in the limit of delta t tending to 0. That is i of t is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 delta q by delta t. The SI unit of current is ampere A. Now you can see about the electric current in conductors. In case of conductors, they develop an electric current when an electric field is applied. In the case of conductors, they possess free electrons which are free to move about in the conductor. Now we can consider a conductor in the form of a cylinder. Now two dielectric discs which are charged negatively and positively are attached to the two ends of the cylinder. So, there is a potential difference between the two ends of the cylinder. An electric field will be created and will be directed from positive to negative. The electrons will be accelerated due to this electric field to the positive side. The motion will thus neutralize the charges. Electric current will flow for a short time as long as there is motion of electrons. There can also be a mechanism in which the neutralized charges at the cylinder's end are replenished so that a steady current flows. Cells or batteries are the mechanisms used to achieve this. Now, Ohm's law. This is a law relating to the flow of currents. And it was discovered by G.S. Ohm in 1828. The Ohm's law gives a relation between electric current and potential difference. It states that the current I flowing through a conductor is proportional to the potential difference V applied across the conductor. That is V proportional to I. V is equal to Ri. Where R is called resistance of the conductor. And it is having an SI unit of ohm. The resistance R depends not only on the material but 
also on the dimensions of the material. It can be found that the resistance is equal to rho L by A, where rho is the resistivity of the material, L is the length of the material, and A is the area of cross section. Now, according to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Now, if we substitute the value of R, then V is equal to I rho L by A. I by A is equal to current density J. And V, which is the potential difference, is equal to E into L. Therefore, E L is equal to J rho L or E is equal to J rho. Now, conductivity sigma is the reciprocal of resistivity. Therefore, we can write current density J is equal to sigma E. Now we shall see the drift of electrons and origin of resistivity. In the case of metals, it consists of fixed positive ions and electrons in motion. And these electrons always undergo random collisions with the fixed positive charges. Now under an electric field, the movement of electrons is such that it drifts by a distance as it is shown in this figure. If there was no drift, an electron starting from A after successive collisions would have come out at B. But due to this drift, it comes out at B dash. Now, for n electrons with ith electron having a velocity vi at a given time, it is seen that the average velocity is 0. That is 1 by n sigma i is equal to 1 to n vi is equal to 0. Now, under electric field, electrons are accelerated. And this acceleration is A is equal to negative E, which is the charge of the electron into E, capital E, which is the electric field applied, divided by M. Now, velocity Vi of electron after last collision is Ti time. Therefore, Vi is equal to small letter Vi minus small letter E into capital letter E by M into Ti. Now, let tau be average time between successive collisions. And this Ti may be greater than tau or lesser than tau. So, in order to find the drift velocity, we have to find the average. So, Vd is equal to Vi average. That's equal to small letter Vi average minus small letter E, capital letter E by M, Ti average. That is, Vi of average is 0. So, 0 minus E, E by M into tau. So, the drift velocity is Vd is equal to negative E into electric field divided by mass into tau, which is the average time interval between successive collisions. Now, using this, we can find an expression for conductivity. For that, first we can consider a conductor in the form of a cylinder. And let us consider an area A, which is normal to the direction of electric field E. Now let us consider that electrons pass through this A, that is electrons having a drift velocity Vd in small time interval delta t travels distance delta x to pass through A. So the amount of charge crossing the area A in time delta t is I delta t. Now I delta t is equal to n which is the number of free electrons into E, which is the charge of the electron, into A, the area, into drift velocity, into delta T. 
So I is equal to E square capital A by M into tau N E. Substituting the value for drift velocity. Now I by A is equal to J, current density. Hence, mod of J is equal to N E square by M tau into mod of E. Since J and E are in the same direction, we can write J is equal to N E square by M into tau E. Now, since J is equal to sigma E that we have already proven, we can write sigma, which is the conductivity is equal to N E square by M into tau. Now we can see the limitations of Ohm's law. The first limitation is that V ceases to be proportional to I at higher values of I. Then second is that the relation between V and I depends on the sign of V. In other words, if I is the current for a certain V, then reversing the direction of V, keeping its magnitude fixed, does not produce a current of the same magnitude as I in the opposite direction. This happens, for example, in a diode. Then third one is, the relation between V and I is not unique. That is, there is more than one value of V for the same current I. A material exhibiting such behavior is gallium arsenide. So this is the end of this video. In this video, I have given an introduction to electric current and explained the Ohm's law. If you have got any doubt, please comment in the section below. Thank you.